Hey, what is up guys? I'm Adaptations, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to easily kill Cerberus in Old School RuneScape. I've done an okay amount of Cerberus, and I really like it because you get pretty good experience here. I was receiving around 100,000 combat XP and about 25,000 Slayer XP an hour. But on top of that, you also have a chance to make really good money here, up to 2.7 mil an hour on average at the current prices. Most of this also comes from large drops and not consistent money like something like Zora or Vorkath will. And to me, that drive and that want to just get the high priced item is what really, really pushes me to keep coming here. So the requirements for the boss are smashing the like button if you found the video useful. Just kidding. But this really helps the algorithm push my video to more people. If you want to see more guides, please also be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell. Okay. But the actual requirements for Cerberus are 91 Slayer, although you could come earlier with a Wild Pie, you could even come as early as 86, however that would be fairly annoying to keep having to use Pies and I really don't recommend it at all. However, if you're at 88 to 90 Slayer, it might be worth giving it a shot and you'll just have to see if this method is too tedious for you or not. I also recommend that you have 80 plus in attack, strength, and defense if you plan on using melee which I feel like is pretty common for most bosses of around this tier, or 80 range and defense if you're planning on ranging Serb. If you're going to melee, you should have 70 prayer for piety, and if you're going to range, I recommend 74 prayer and rigor. However, you could get away without this and just use Eagle Eye instead, but this does give up a good chunk of DPS. The higher prayer you have in general, the better though, as your prayer pots will restore more prayer and it'll make it easier to deal with the ghost. 65 to 80 agility are also very useful here, and I don't think I would recommend coming here with less than 65 agility at a bare minimum. The reason for this is that Cerberus's lair is in the Taverly dungeon. So with at least 65 prayer, you can use a summer pie and squeeze through the pipe in the Taverly dungeon to the blue dragons and skip having to walk all the way around the dungeon. However, with at least 75 agility, this gets even easier. Because with a summer pie, you can take the shortcut to the west, and this is the shortest path to get to Cerberus. Unless, of course, you're using a Keymaster Teleport, but that's an untradeable drop from Cerberus himself, and chances are, if you're looking at this guide, you won't have any. If you have 80 agility, you will not need any summer pies, and you will still have access to the fastest path to Cerberus. If you are close enough to 75 agility where it would only take you a couple of hours, I highly recommend it, especially if you plan on doing a lot of Cerberus. In the long run, this will only save you time. Okay, so to get there, personally I use my max cape to go to the Taverly home portal, however you could use a construction cape if you have 99 construction, or you could just move your house to the Taverly portal, break a home tab, and then once inside your house you can just walk out of the portal. From there you just run south to the dungeon. Alternatively, you can also teleport to Falador and go over the crumbling wall and run north. I just think that the Taverly method is a little quicker. Once you're in the dungeon, just follow the paths I mentioned earlier, depending on your agility level. Once you make it to the cave where Cerberus is, you can go any direction to start the Cerberus encounter. I personally always take the rightmost path. I'm not sure why, it's just the first path that I took and I've always done it since. Now let's talk a little bit about Cerberus herself. So Cerberus can hit using all attack styles and is weak to crush. However, unless you're using a scythe or full inquisitor with the mace, the best weapon against Cerb is the arc light. That's right, arc light, the free weapon that you get from quests. As of March 17th of 2021, Cerberus is now a demon. And as such, demon bane weapons work against her as they do any other monsters in the game that are classified as demons, and this is currently my favorite way to kill Cerberus. As of the making of this guide, the blowpipe has not yet been nerfed, but due to the cost and the arc light being so cheap, I would recommend that you just use the arc light over the blowpipe. Another huge bonus of using the arc light is that because it's a melee weapon, the amulet of blood fury can be used to really extend your Cerberus trips. This will basically make it where you only end your trip when you run out of super restores or prey potions. The Amulet of Blood Fury has a 20% chance of healing you for 30% of the damage that you deal. Every hit that you deal to Serb, whether it heals you or not, will drain a charge, meaning that every hit costs you about 665 GP. I'm averaging about 3000 charges used per Cerberus task, 
but the crystals that you get more than pay for this, especially with the extra kill trips the amulet gives you, and therefore increasing your GP per hour. Alternatively, if you have the Twisted Bow, then the bow is absolutely an amazing choice, and from the numbers I saw online, superior in terms of DPS to the Arclight, however it feels much clunkier. What I mean by this is that sometimes when you're ranging with the Twisted Bow, the bow will just noodle consistently, and you'll end up tanking two or three ghost phases because you just hit nothing but zeros instead of the pretty consistent one that you get with the Arclight. Okay, so for the loot that you come here for, it's mainly the crystals that she drops which include the Pagasian, the Eternal, and the Primordial, as well as the Smoldering Stone. These are dropped at a rate of about 1 in 512 each, but you have a 1 in 128 chance of hitting the table and receiving a crystal, meaning that you should average a crystal per task in the long run here, which is really good. The other major reason that you would come here is the Pet Drop, which, in line with other Slayer bosses, drops at a rate of 1 in 3000. Overall, on average, your loot should be between 2.25 and 3 mil an hour, depending on how many kills you manage to get an hour, which is quite good. For gear, it's really pretty straightforward. Use the best DPS gear you have available for the style that you choose. However, like I mentioned before, I highly recommend bringing an Amulet of Blood Fury over a Torture because of the crazy healing effect that it gives you. I was averaging over 12 to 15 kill trips, with my only spec weapon being the Arc Light itself and not the best in slot gear. In the clips you'll see of me in the background, I was using Torag, Dragon Boots, Dragon Defender, Arc Light, Amulet of Blood Fury, the Slayer Helm, the Ring of Suffering, Fire Max Cape, and the Ferocious Gloves. If you have Bandos, bring it. If not, then it's really not that big of a deal. I don't have Bandos because I bought full max range gear for Zolra and Hydra, among other things. For ranged, I brought the Slayer Helm, Arma Top and Bottom, Twisted Bow, Pagasian Boots, Barrow's Gloves, the Archer Ring Imbued, the Necklace of Anguish, and Dragon Arrows. If you plan to bring a Spectral, make sure that you also bring Rune or Dragon Knives so that you can still DPS Cerberus while dealing with the Ghosts. I don't have the cash for a Spectral, so I just brought more Prey Potions instead. So for melee, your spec weapon that you should bring is Claws, if you can afford them. If you can't afford Claws, any other damage special that you have available will work. Alternatively, you can bring a Sarah God Sword to heal and restore some prayer to extend your trips if you wish. I didn't do this. I just spec with the Arc Light, and it went pretty well. For range, if you wish to bring a spec weapon, just bring the Blowpipe with Rune or Dragon Darts to spec and heal off of Cerberus. I also don't do this, just because they're about to nerf it, and I'm not sure how good it will be after, and I don't want to be stuck with the Blowpipe. So with the melee setup, the inventory that I bring is two Divine Super Combat Potions, a Teleport Out, your spec weapon if you choose to bring one, 12 Super Restores, and the rest is your food of choice. I always bring Anglers, however Sharks will be fine. The range inventory is almost identical, except you need more food because you don't have the option of the Amulet of Blood Fury heals. So I bring two Divine Bastion Potions, seven Super Restores, and a Blowpipe if you plan on bringing one, a Teleport Out, and the rest is just food. Now let's talk about the fight itself. Cerberus's first attack is always going to be a combo attack. If you pray mage, then when you see the first ball immediately switch to range, and then to melee, you can block all three of these with the correct timing. It's not very hard to do when you get it down, it can just be a bit of weird timing at first. After this, the fight is pretty straightforward, you just DPS down Cerb. Once Cerb gets below 400 HP, she will summon three ghosts. You know that Cerberus is doing this because it'll say Aru over Cerberus's head. When the ghosts come out, you have to pray against them based on their combat style. If you pray correctly, the ghosts will drain 30 prayer. If you pray incorrectly, the ghosts will drain 30 life instead. This is incredibly important to get down and could be the difference between you having fun and hating this boss. The red ghost is melee, the green ghost is ranged, and the blue is magic. The ghosts will always attack you from left to right if you're facing directly at them, and this is why I always try to orient my camera to be straight onto their spawns. It is important also to note that they will come out in a random order, so don't get used to just doing one order and trying to get it down and getting the timings down because it will always change. If you have a spectral, you can put the spectral on when you see Cerberus Aru, and the ghosts will only drain 15 prayer instead of 30 prayer. 
This could really help extend your trips. It's important to know that you don't need 90 prayer to tank them without the spectral as well. You want the third ghost to hit you on as low as prayer as possible so that you're not wasting supplies. I normally try to have my prayer at 2 or 3 for example. Cerberus can also summon lava pits on the ground. Before she does this, you will see Gurr above Cerberus' head. If you're standing on or next to them, they will begin to damage you, so make sure you put some distance between you and the pools. The unfortunate thing to keep in mind is that it seems as though the lava pools and the ghosts come back to back a majority of the time, and this can trip you up especially if you're new to the boss. Just try to stay calm, and if you have to click super far away from the boss and pools and just focus on prayer switches and staying alive, then do that. Once you're comfortable, there's really nothing else left to worry about except how long you'll go dry or getting a bunch of pigasian rolls as they're the cheapest crystals. So far in my 1700 kills I've gotten 2 primordial crystals, and I think 5 of the other crystals including 2 eternals, but so far 0 smolderings. I'm hoping to get the pet drop soon, but I'm barely over halfway to the drop rate so I can't complain too much just yet. Before we end the video here, I would like to just thank all of you again who have watched, liked, or commented on a video of mine. It really means a lot. It's really hard to believe we're over 400 subscribers and have four 6,000 or higher view videos. I'll put links to my Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram down in the description if you guys are interested in keeping up with me outside of the game. I'm thinking of maybe starting a Discord channel as well that we can all hang out in and start building our own little community. But for now, I tend to post pictures of drops I get in-game either on Twitter or Instagram and try to post and upload a new video when I go live on Twitch. I'm also trying to get back into streaming more. Currently, I've been streaming on Fridays, but we're going to try to bump that back up to two or more days a week when I'm feeling less mentally exhausted from work. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful, and I really hope I see you guys in the next guide. Goodbye.